Okay, guys, we can start. Can you hear me clearly? Also, there in the back. Good. So, I will not use the microphone. Um, so, we are at the um, uh, fifth lecture on these tutorials for Internet of Things. Today, we will see Motrunner, which is an IBM system. Um, which is ba provides basically the same functionalities as TinyOS. So it is um, a framework for creating applications for sensor networks. And it gives both the, let's say, um, API, so building blocks for implementing applications. Uh, so it gives you basically the, the basic tools for uh, creating um, a simple application that can exchange messages read from sensors and so on and so forth, plus it contains a, a simulation environment um, pretty similar to Contiki. So it's a nice graphical simulation environment where you can test your application. Um, we would see that although from a, uh, let's say, quick overlook, the functionalities <coughs> with respect to TinyOS may be uh, the same, uh, Motrunner takes a complete different approach in how the system is structured. And this has some pros and some cons, so we'll uh, discuss briefly about that. And then we will see examples as usual, so uh, we will work together with the virtual machine and we'll try to learn how to use the system uh, a little bit better. Uh, now, I want to make uh, this very clear. I told you that when, when you go out there and you actually see at what's happening in both the research uh, area and the industry, uh, you have this fight basically between TinyOS and Contiki. Now, why didn't I mention uh, Motrunner? Well, because um, Motrunner, although it is from IBM, so from a, let's say, giant in software development, it is not, um, it, it is not wor working very well, so it's not well supported. It was basically created as a research project inside IBM, and for that reason it was basically uh, built by a, a, a small number of people, so everything which regards uh, documentation and support for Motrunner is not as well detailed as in TinyOS or Contiki. Uh, it is still in beta version, as we will see. That means that it has issues, okay? And for all these reasons, it's generally not used um, for, for, let's say, research purposes or commercial application. Um, but but, but it's, it's good to have a look at it because it starts by, let's say, taking a different approach with respect to TinyOS in how the operating system works and how the application are managed, and it's uh, worthwhile to look uh, at it briefly. Um, questions so far on the on the uh, topics what, that we have already seen? No. Um, regarding projects, uh, I've been a little bit busy this week, but I have already, let's say, starting putting up together a document and expect it to be online for the end of this week, okay? Uh, there are three projects, basically, that you can choose. Of course, you can propose one of your choice. I mean, you don't have to stick with the one I propose. And these three projects will be one on a smart bracelet for um, monitoring uh, children, okay? So basically you are requested to simulate the uh, operation mode of these uh, smart bracelets. One would be about um, nearest neighbor search in a uh, sensor network, so basically performing a query on a database which is not centrally uh, stored, but it's distributed among different sensors. And the third one will be about collecting data uh, with ThingSpeak and analyzing this data with, with ThingSpeak. Okay, so three different projects which basically 
reflect uh, the things that we have seen during the lectures. Okay, so well, I'll send an email to, to everyone when the, the document is online, so you can go and check. Okay, so let's start with IBM. Uh, again, I'm sort of repeating myself, but IBM uh, Mode Runner is both an operating system for wireless sensor nodes, okay? So it's, it's a software that can be installed on the hardware that we have seen, so these Telos B nodes, Iris node, and so on and so forth. And it is also a runtime and development environment for visual wireless sensor networks. That means that you can use it to simulate a network, uh, to manage the application on nodes. So it's, it's not only an operating system that runs on the nodes, but it's also everything that's around um, this, this operation. Now the current status, if I'm not wrong, it should be beta 17. Okay, so if you go on the website and you check what's, what's the latest uh, um, down, downloadable um, version, it should be beta 17. You know what a beta version is, right? So when, when you see beta version, it means that it's a software version which is there for it being used, but it's not uh, bug free. Okay, so there are still some bugs, some issues inside, and the purpose of the beta version is uh, basically to be tested by the users themselves. Okay, so you can download it, you can use it, and whenever you spot an issue or a bug or something that doesn't work as it should, you are basically asked or expected to provide a feedback to IBM saying, okay, in this situation the things are not working properly, so on and so forth, so that they can eventually fix the bug. In your virtual machine, so the one that you download, you have uh, installed the version 11 of uh, Motrunner. Um, that's why basically, uh, sorry, that's because version beta 17 works for um, uh, Linux 64-bit system and your virtual machine is a 32-bit system. So that's why I had to install beta 11. But I mean, more or less, they are similar. So don't be scared about this. Uh, if you download Motrunner, the, the good thing is that again is available for all the let's say host operating system. So, I mean, it it depends on what uh, operating system you have on your PC in order to run the framework. And so again, this gives a good flexibility to users. Let's see. Um, some of the key features of Motrunner so that we can start understanding what are the differences already with respect to TinyOS that we have seen so far. So the first uh, big difference that we have is in the programming language. So the, the language that we use for writing application. We have seen that in TinyOS we used NestC Okay, which is a dialect of C, so basically it's C programming language with some uh, differences in how we create the application because we have configuration, module, and so on and so forth, but the actual code that then we write is C. In Motrunner, we can use even higher um, level programming languages, and in particular, we can choose between Java and C Sharp. Both of them are so-called object-oriented programming languages and they are generally appreciated because they, they I mean, being uh, high-level programming languages, they, they really simplify the, the life of our programmer, okay? So they are actually very, very uh, simple to use. For what concern the hardware requirements, that is, what kind of platform you need to run Motrunner once deployed on a sensor. We have, um, let's say, the same requirements um, as TinyOS, so we need at least eight kilobytes of RAM in this case to store all the variables for the operating system, and at least 64 kilobytes of flash memory to store the executables, and I mean, given these requirements, there's a limited set of supported platform, 
uh, I have listed here some. Um, well, not that meaningful to you since you will mostly simulate this, so you don't actually need any hardware. Uh, of course, you can simulate the code uh, on modes, so we will see that again, like TinyOS, we can use the same mo the same code that we have written for for nodes <coughs> for simulation, so we don't need to change it or to do you know particular adjustments for performing the simulation. And of course, the simulation is good, you know, for the same reasons as we have seen in TinyOS. So for debugging purposes, testing purposes, um, and analysis purposes. So one good feature of the Motrunner simulation environment is that it gives you the possibility of keeping track of the energy consumption of a, a mode. So it has, let's say, a, a model of energy consumption that is uh, tracked throughout the simulation. So you can, again, for example, compare different implementation and see which one is the most energy efficient. All these features, of course, give uh, Motrunner these characteristics, <laughs> so portability, scalability, and efficiency. Now, when you read these three words, you always have to be a little bit, let's say, skeptical about them, because everyone which is providing uh, an operating system for sensor network will claim that its operating system is portable, scalable, and efficient, okay? So actually, I'm reporting here what's on the white paper of Motrunner, that is the advertising paper of Motrunner, but I'm not sure uh, about this characteristic, mainly because since Motrunner is not used a lot in real deployment, that's, that, that's really uh, a small history to, to base uh, one's conclusion on, so, okay? So, they claim that Motrunner is good. Now, <clears throat> one thing that we have to understand is that from scratch, let's say, from, since from the beginning, Motrunner was designed in a completely different way with respect to TinyOS, okay, compared to TinyOS. We have seen that TinyOS, it's basically an operating system that already provides functionalities, but it's in some sense glued together with the application that it runs. So uh, the um, developer, whenever it's run, running an application, or better, whenever it's programming an application, it will decide at directly at compile time what part of the operating system to include in its application or not. So by selecting proper components and interfaces, we can build an application starting from scratch. So for example, if in TinyOS our application doesn't need, uh, I don't know, sensor readings, we will not include the component which is related for sensor reading. And by not including it, we will save, uh, let's say, memory, we will save resources for uh, computation <laughs> energy and so on. Okay. So the uh, logic that is behind TinyOS is to include only what you need, okay, in order to be as uh, efficient as possible. Conversely, Motrunner takes a different approach which is more similar to uh, the operating system that run on our laptops and PCs. So uh, the idea is to have Let's say this is the hardware, okay? On top of the hardware, we have a very, very small abstraction layer which is written in C and which basically gives access to all the, to all the hardware that we have here using LEDs, using the radio, sensing, uh, uh, so making measurements on the sensors. And this is always present. And what is always present also are these three components, which are the virtual machine, which is basically the operating system itself. 
So it's a process that always runs on a sensor node. Okay? And this is the first difference with respect to TinyOS. Then we have uh, the runtime library, which again is basically an API, so uh, a set of functions that the user application can call in order to use the hardware abstraction layer. And we will see them. So it's basically how to use the radio, how to use the LED, and so on and so forth. And then we have the 8.2.15.4 layer, which is basically the set of functions that you can use in order to manipulate packets, transmit packets, and receive packets. So everything that uh, is uh, related to message transmission and reception here. OK, so uh, we, we see here the difference with respect to TinyOS. In TinyOS, you, let's say, build the application by picking only those parts of the operating system that you need. So it's a strongly application-driven uh, design, let's say. While here, you have already something which um, can be used. And these parts are always running on the sensor node. And on top of them, so in the basically last layer of this graph, you deploy your application. And generally, your application is either an application, uh, a standalone application, or an application which is run on top of, of some network stack. Okay, Motrunner already gives some primi primitives for, uh, for network protocols. Okay. We will see basically only the very, very top layer of this stack. Okay. So what we will see and generally we'll, what developers uh, use is only the last layer. So what they do is basically they write Java or C-sharp code depending on what they prefer. And this Java and C-sharp code use the application, uh, uh, basically the functions that are provided by all these modules. Okay? These modules run on top of, of the virtual machine, which then access the hardware abstraction layer and basically translates the high-level functions into low-level command for the hardware abstraction layer. But the main difference here is that you have this module here, the virtual machine, which is always, always present and running on a sensor node. Now you may ask, is this really energy efficient, having a process which continuously runs on, on a sensor node? Well, the guys at IBM say yes. So they say that by using this virtual machine, they can control exactly what's happening on a sensor node. That means also they can turn the sensor node off uh, in an off state whenever uh, the resources are not needed by the uh, upper layer applications. <coughs> OK. Another difference that we have um, compared to TinyOS is the What's, what's called the tool chain. So what happens uh, from the point where we finish to write our source code to the point where this source code becomes something that we can actually run on a sensor network. So the idea is that we start from here on the top left with a Java or C Sharp application, where actually source code and we basically compile it using the Java compiler or the C Sharp compiler. And what happens is, is that we can include in this, um, in this compilation process some external libraries. We will see some example. Uh, what Motrunner does basically converts uh, this uh, application and the libraries into a uh, SIL file which is then converted into bytecode in order to produce three different three different sets 
of bytes basically. Um, there's an SDA file which is an application meant for debug purposes, an SBA file which is the actual application that we will be installed and run on sensor nodes, and then an SXP um, file which uh, basically takes the functionality of your application and use them to provide services to other applications. So it means that you can write an application which is then used by someone else, okay? Something similar to what TinyOS components uh, do, basically. So in TinyOS you can write a component and then make it available for another person to be used. Here is the same. So in the compilation process you also produce something that can be used by others, basically. Now, this file, the, the one in the middle, the SBA, is actually called the assembly, okay? Which, basically, this keyword assembly is um, a synonym for application, okay? So, the assembly is the application. And it is the actual uh, bytecode that will be loaded on the sensor node and that, that will be run by the virtual machine. What, there's a component in the virtual machine which is called the MoMA, the Mote Manager, which manages all the assemblies which are on a mote. Okay, so or here you should ask something. Okay, so I'm using a plural here, assemblies, because in Mote Runner you can have multiple assemblies on a node at the same time. And this is something that you cannot have in TinyOS. So in TinyOS, since the process of um, creating the application is completely application driven, it means that you create an application, you install it on a sensor node, and that's it. So a sensor node can run only one application at a time. In Mode Runner, this is kind of different because you have the virtual machine which is always running and the virtual machine takes care of executing the assemblies that are uh, loaded on top of it. So that means that you can also load multiple assemblies as long as you have room for them, of course. And it's the mode manager, MoMA, that will manage how to run these assemblies, okay? That means that they can also be run simultaneously, for example. <clears throat> of course, uh, in order to store these assemblies, you have to need enough memory. And in fact, these assemblies are stored in the so-called persistent memory, so the flash memory of a node. And they will remain there until they are explicitly deleted by a user. So we will see how to load multiple assemblies on a node and how to delete them by using the mode manager. <clears throat> now, since we have this virtual machine and assemblies on top of it, we also need to have a completely different memory model with respect to the one that we have on TinyOS. In TinyOS, we have a very, very simple memory model. So we have this, basically only the stack, and all variables must be declared in the stack. And I've shown you, okay, it's a good idea to always uh, look at the memory footprint of your application to make sure that all the variables that you have declared do not exceed your stack uh, capacity, basically. Um, in Mode Runner, we have basically, we have to keep track of two uh, memories. The RAM memory, which again is similar to what we have in TinyOS. So is the memory which is used for uh, storing variables. And since we have multiple assemblies, potentially this memory is shared by all the assemblies. And then we have the flash or ROM memory, so the read-only memory, where the assemblies are stored. And this is uh, 
used as a cabin space, of course, to, to store the assemblies and load them when needed. Now, a feature of Motrunner is uh, to have a garbage collector, which is already implemented inside. Anyone knows what a garbage collector is or have heard about the name garbage collector? No one? So the garbage collector is an algorithm, basically, which is inside the virtual machine and which scans continuously the RAM memory in order to understand if there are variables that can be removed by the memory because they are not useful anymore, okay? So that's generally done by object-oriented uh, languages in order to uh, simplify the life of a developer and, let's say, um, avoid that the developer um, has to explicitly allocate and deallocate memory. So in uh, Motrunner we have this garbage collector which is basically a process which continuously scans the memory and understands if there are variables that can be removed or not. The garbage collector is executed only when the moat is idle, so when the moat is not running any particular operation of course. So in, let's say, during pauses between um, application operations and, of course, it is a convenient feature because it helps in optimizing the space in, that we have available in map for memory, but it's costly, okay? So it's uh, an energy cost and a computational cost that uh, Motrunner has in order to simplify this uh, management of the memory model. <coughs> Okay, um, so we have seen that application in Motrunner can be written in either Java or C Sharp, and of course uh, there are some limitations, okay? So we cannot actually take a program written in Java, copy it and paste it on Motrunner and uh, make it run, okay? We have to make some, uh, some modifications, in particular there are some non-supported features, so some features of Java and C Sharp which are not supported in Motrunner. And these are, for example, uh, the impossibility of using float and double data types, okay? Don't ask me why, this, is, this was very strange to me. But what you can use in Motrunner is basically only integers, that means that every uh, numerical variable in your program must be either quantized or you have to come out with uh, methods for, um, let's say, um, use uh, known integer numbers. We cannot use 64 bits or longer integer arithmetic, okay? So we cannot use long variables. We cannot use multidimensional arrays that is matrices, because of the memory model of Mutrunner. There are no threads, okay? So each assembly is a single thread. We cannot use Boolean arrays. Again, don't ask me why. That was, I mean, it's so simple to implement a Boolean arrays. Why they, they didn't do it? I don't know. And you cannot use strings unless for debugging purposes, and we will see how to use them. Okay. But you can, of course, create your own objects since, since for example, uh, if you use Java or C Sharp, you can create your classes, your own objects, so you can represent um, complicated data types if you want. In this slide, I've put a summary of the differences between Motrunner and TinyOS, okay? That this can be used as, um, um, let's say, very simple uh, prospect for having an overlook on these differences. 
So we have the programming language, which is different, uh, minimum number of files to write per an application. We have seen that in TinyNAS we have at least three. The modular configuration and the make file, which contains the instruction for compilation. While in Motrunner we have only one, which is the assembly, and we will see in a short time it. Compilation process in TinyOS is, uh, well, ad hoc. I mean, you have to uh, explicitly inform the compiler that you want to compile for simulation instead of compiling for um, installation. And you also have to inform the compiler for which platform you want to compile your code. In Motrunner, you have only one compilation process for everything. Simulation interface, in TinyOS we have TOSSIM, which is a command line interface, so you actually have to write a Python script and then run it in the terminal and you see the output of the terminal. In Motrunner we have the graphical user interface, you will see it in, in a while, so it's more similar to Kuja in that sense. Another convenient feature of the Motrunner simulation environment is that you can run multiple applications in it. While in TinyOS, <coughs> if you remember, all nodes in a simulation are forced to run the same application. Okay. And another convenient feature of uh, ModeRunner that TinyOS doesn't have is the real-time mode management. So this is actually very important and it's probably one of the main reasons why Motrunner was developed with a virtual machine. So in TinyOS we have seen that whenever we want to load a program or a new application, we have basically to erase everything we have on the sensor and load the new application, the new executable for the application. So if you decide to change something in your application, once the network is already deployed, you actually have to go there, remove all the sensors, attach them to your programming interface, load the new software, and then put the sensor back on their position. And that, that could be a little bit costly and expensive to do. Maybe you have just one parameter to change, and you have to reprogram all the nodes. Motrunner, instead, because it has the virtual machine which is always running, and assemblies on top of the virtual machine, which are run by the virtual machine, allows us to basically delete an assembly without stopping the node and without interrupting the virtual machine and load a new assembly directly on top without any interruption of the uh, sensor node operating system. This operation can also be done over the air meaning that the assembly can be loaded um, with wireless transmission. Okay? So we can have a process which basically receives all the bytecode of a new application and then loads the new assembly, deleting the previous one. Okay? So that means that if you have a lot of sensors already deployed and you want to, for example, modify just a very minimal things in your assembly, instead of reprogramming manually all the sensors, you can broadcast the new bytecode to all the sensors, and then the virtual machine will take care of deleting the old assembly and loading the new one. So these are a very convenient features that Motrunner has. Okay. Um, if you don't have any question, we can directly go uh, and see how Motrunner works using the virtual machine. So no questions? Good. So the first example that we will see, it's basically the same example that we have seen in TinyOS, so the uh, famous Blink application, which is a very, very simple application which just, which just lights up the LEDs on our sensor, okay? So by looking at this simple application, we already can understand what are the differences with Motrunner and TinyOS, and then we will play a little bit with it. So, as I've said, 
A mode runner application consists of um, one or more classes. Now, if you're not familiar with uh, um, object-oriented programming languages, don't worry, okay? Um, you don't have to understand the details of this. And you can, whenever I talk about classes or objects, you can, you can just think about them as variables, okay? So um, don't be scared about the, let's say, names that you will find uh, in these slides. Um, all the examples that I will show in Motrunner are based on Java, okay? Since we have already seen partially Java for TinyOS and it's generally more easy to understand than C Sharp. Um, but of course, if you are interested in using C Sharp, you are, you are free to do it. So, um, every mode runner application consists of one or more classes that basically are uh, variables. And each class must import the uh, package com IBM Saguaro system which is basically the operating system, okay? So this is a Java package that gives us access to all the APIs of Motrunner. So if we want to write an application, we have to write a class. In this case, we will uh, write this Blink application and we will call the class Light. Um, we can declare a variable which stores the number of LEDs which are on our platform. We, we, we will call this numLEDs, it's an integer. And then um, the application starts right here after this static initializer. So after this keyword, the first line of code after this keyword is actually the first line of code that will be executed by the virtual machine. So what we will do here is first to retrieve how many LEDs our platform has. Do you remember that I have said that the compilation process is one for all? So we don't have to uh, inform the compiler of what is the platform we are going to um, deploy our application onto. That means that we can use different platforms and these different platforms may have different number of LEDs. So as a first step, I will retrieve what is the number of LEDs in my platform. And by I will call the LED API and the get num LEDs method on, on, on it. We will see in a while this LED API. And then for, I, I have a four cycle uh, looping throughout all these LEDs and I will set the state of each LED to 1. That is basically I will turn on that LED. Now I'm using this uh, LED keyword here. You see the capital LED word. This is actually um, an API which is used to manage the LEDs and it's the LED class and you can obtain the documentation for it in the Motrunner documentation. We will see in a while how to access it. But the LED class contains the following functions that you can call. For example, the get color uh, function, the get number of LEDs, the get the state of each LED, and the set the state of each LED. So by using these functions, you can modify uh, the LEDs and get information on the LEDs. This is actually similar to what we have in TinyOS. So let's go on our virtual machine and let's start looking a little bit at how to play with Motrunner. So if you open a terminal Um, you should have this folder, Motrunner, here, so you can access it. And inside Motrunner, there's a folder which is called Examples. <clears throat> and you should have this light 
example here. So we can access this directory <coughs> and inside this directory you should have this, full, this file light.java right? So let's open it with gedit for example so, so we see the actual uh, source code so this is um, what we have actually I don't know if maybe you don't have this string here right you have it or not yes okay well uh, ignore it uh, so far what you should see and we, what we have seen on the slide is basically this for loop here okay so how to set states of each led so this is actually the application so a single Java file that we can then compile and run let's see how to compile it so first of all we should actually learn how to run Motrunner and this can be done by typing MRSH <coughs> which stands for Motrunner Shell so if you type MRSH and then enter you should see a cursor which means that Motrunner was correctly initialized Another way to understand if Motrunner was correctly initialized is to go on your browser here on Firefox. And okay. And then on localhost port 5000. So localhost <coughs> 5000 should give you the IBM Motrunner launchpad. Okay, so this page can be accessed only if you have uh, typed MRSH on your terminal and so you have started Motrunner basically. And in this uh, page you have basically everything you need to run Motrunner. So for example you have the documentation here as a first uh, link. Uh, <coughs> So you have here information on how to install, how to run it. And here on top, you have some links, which is basically the documentation of Motrunner. If you go on the top right link here, System API, you have all the APIs, so all functions and classes that you can call in your applications. So for example you have LED here, which is the class that we used in our light application. If you click on it, you have all the methods that you can call on this class with a um, small description. Okay, so for example the LED set state method will uh, explain that you can set the state of some LEDs if you pass a zero the LED will be turned off if you pass one the LED be, will be turned on and so on and so forth okay we will see other classes later when we for example use radio communication or this kind of stuff okay now if you stop so if you type control C on your terminal and you exit from the Motrunner shell then the browser will say that you have lost the connection to Motrunner okay so you can access this page only if Motrunner shell is running <coughs> now let's see the compilation process which actually you have here on the slides so in order to compile the application we will use the Motrunner compiler which is uh, which you can call by typing MRC Motrunner compiler and in order to compile an application 
into an assembly. So we have the source code, which is a Java file, and we want to produce an assembly which can be loaded on a sensor node. The syntax is the following. So we have to type modrunner compiler minus minus assembly equal to, we put the name that we want to give to our assembly. And for example, a convention in modrunner is to use the name of the source file and then put minus a number which is basically the version number of your application. So in this case, for example, light minus 1.0. And then <coughs> you can, um, and then you can, of course, pass the source source file that must be compiled in order to be, to produce this application. Now, before you do this, let's just comment a couple of lines here. So let's just comment this line. Okay. Uh, should be with this, okay. And these lines here and this line here. <coughs> okay. So com let's comment all the lines that are not shown in the, um, these slides here, basically. Okay, so comment all the lines which are not here. And you can comment by putting a double slash, basically. Let's save this. So if we want to compile, we'll say MRC minus minus assembly equal to light minus 1.0 and then we have to pass light.java which is the source file type enter this will take a while okay if you look at uh, the output, you should see three files output by the MRC compiler, which are the three uh, files basically which were shown in the tool chain. So the one that you use for the actual assembly, the one that you use for debug purposes, and the one that you use for uh, giving other applications the functionalities that you have implemented. Now, in this uh, situation we just care about the first one, the SBA, which is actually the assembly that we want to load on our mode. Now, how to run it? Well, we would actually uh, like to create a simulation environment into, in, in which we have one node. We would like to take this assembly and put it onto the node in order to see whether the, la the LEDs of this node will be turned on, right? So how to do this? Well, we can restart our um, Motrunner shell, typing MRSH. And your browser should uh, become online again. And then we can go down here on the dashboard, so the bottom link in uh, the Motrunner launchpad and the dashboard is actually the simulation environment <coughs> so from here you can uh, let's say simulate nodes create uh, different nodes put assemblies on them and so on and so forth so in order to um, let's say manage this simulation, you can either use the graphical interface that you have here. So for example, you can create a mode from here, put assemblies, load assemblies on the node directly from here, or similarly, you can use the terminal in order to create modes and manage the assemblies on top of the mode. So if you want, for example, to create a mode, you can type mode minus create, in the terminal and a 
mode will appear here, okay, in your dashboard. So if you go with your uh, mouse pointer on the mode and you stay a, a little while on it, you will see what are the assemblies which are now on the mode, okay, which are already loaded on the mode. And in this case, we have two assemblies. One is the Saguaro system, which is actually the virtual machine. And the other one is a Nairis system, which basically contains the hardware abstraction layer for the particular mode that you have created. Okay? So whenever you create nodes of different types, you may have a different assemblies, different assembly loaded on top which of course gives the functionalities of the particular hardware. Um, when, you, when you type mode create, you can also uh, inform the simulation of, uh, for example, parameters of your node, such as the name, uh, the address, the position in space, and so on and so forth. Okay? Um, there's an help that you can use in order to understand what kind of parameters you can pass to this simulation. Then if you want to uh, load an assembly on top of a, of a node, again you can do this either from the graphical user interface of, or from the terminal. From the terminal we will use the so-called MoMA, the mode management, mode manager actually, which I have uh, told you is the application that controls which assemblies should be loaded onto each node and which assembly should be run. So if we want for example to run our light application on top of a node we will type MoMA, so mode manager, load and then we have to pass the name of our assembly. So in this case is light minus 1.0.sba Okay, so if I type enter now, this application will be loaded on top of the node and we should see that the three LEDs of the node will be turned on, okay, because this is what the application does. So I'll type enter and in fact the three LEDs are on now. Oops, what did I do? Close, okay. So you see that the three LEDs are now on, okay? And we also see that we have our light assembly now loaded on top of this mode. <coughs> on the terminal we can also call, for example, MoMA list, which gives you a list of all the assemblies which are loaded on each node, okay? So for example, if we type MoMA list, we have our mode. This is the address of our mode, and this is, these are the three assemblies which are currently loaded on this mode. So the Saguaro system, the Iris system, and our light application, which we have already uh, loaded. We can also uh, delete <coughs> delete assemblies from, from a node. For example, we can um, call MoMA delete and then we say which assembly we want to delete. For example, light minus 1.0 and this will basically delete the application from our node. Okay. So by doing this we can manage what assemblies are loaded on each node. We can load multiple assemblies and so on and so forth. And in a real deployment, these operations can also be done over the air, okay? So you don't actually need to have your mode installed, you can just broadcast the code, basically, so that nodes can actually upload themselves. <coughs> Okay, so this was a very simple application. Uh, what we have to look now, actually very, a little bit uh, quickly, is how to use all other functionalities that Motrunner uh, gives us. So 
in particular how to use timers, how to use the radio and how to log messages. So the, basically the same things that we have seen in TinyOS, we will uh, see them now in Motrunner. So of course we would like to have timers, okay, so same um, functionality that we had in TinyOS in order to trigger periodical functionalities and uh, of course Motrunner gives you the possibility of using timers and again this is done through an API that you can call okay so the best thing of or well better the best way of understanding how a timer works is to use an application an example okay so again we will look at the blink application now um, again you should have it in your uh, virtual machine let's open another tab you should have here in the examples folder the blink uh, folder <coughs> and we can open the blink.java source file so that we see how to use timers so this application is basically the same that we have seen in TinyOS so we have a timer that periodically toggles the LEDs of our platform on and off okay um, I will go kind of quick with the source code but a timer is basically a variable that you can declare you have to declare the interval or the, per the period of this timer so how often this timer fires um, in this ap application we have or again the number of flats to retrieve for our platform and then we have uh, an index which will basically keep track of which LED will be toggled in our application so let's see what the application does. So it starts with LED 0, so the index at the beginning is 0. We get the number of LEDs that we have in our platform. And then we create a new timer simply by calling the constructor new on the timer class. Then we call this function all LEDs off, which is um, here. So it's basically a for loop that loops on all the LEDs and set the state of all LEDs to zero. So basically this function resets all the LEDs depending on their previous state. And here is basically how you um, link the timer to a function to be executed each time the timer fires. So uh, you set this callback, which is basically uh, a pointer to a function which must be executed each time the timer fires, and you uh, declare here what is the function that should be executed. Okay? In our case, is the function blink on the blink class, which is the actual class that I am creating here. So the function blink does the following okay it's here so the function blink basically uh, uh, look at the state of the IDX LED if it's 1 it will turn it to 0 if it's 0 it will turn it to 1 so it's basically a toggling of the LED and then it will increment the ID of the LED for the next uh, timer firing event okay and then finally it will set the new point in the future at which the timer should fire again this is a little difference with respect to TinyOS in TinyOS we could directly call the timer uh, periodic function by uh, setting uh, the period of, um, of these firing events in Motrunner we, uh, each time the timer fires we have to basically reset it and uh, um, basically start another timer that will fire at a predefined interval 
okay, so this is um, this is the function that is executed each time the timer fires and finally what we have to do is to start the timer so this is done here then there are other, there are other functions which can be also ignored so for example this one says set a system info callback so each time something happens on a system level meaning that for example you reset the node or the an assembly is deleted or so on and so forth uh, there's a sys info so basically uh, or you reset of all LEDs each time there's something something happens on a system level not important actually <clears throat> so this example shows you, uh, how to create a timer and how to link a function with this timer so that you can execute something whenever the timer fires let's see if we can run it um, okay it's already here so let me stop this run here create one node and then I load this executable oops okay I've loaded the executable and as you see the LEDs here are, are blinking every second or two seconds I don't remember um, every two seconds yes so we can track our application on the simulation uh, interface graphical user interface <clears throat> any question Now, we have seen how to use the timers. What we would like to do is also to send messages, okay? So to use the radio, actually, to transmit messages between different nodes. And of course, this is possible with Motrunner through the radio class APA. Okay, so we can use an object which basically gives us act access to the radio. We can modify packets. We can transmit packets and receive packets and so on and so forth. Now, there are a couple of differences here with respect to TinyOS. If you remember, TinyOS has the active message abstraction, which is basically a component that you can use in order to easily modify packets, to set the um, source address and destination address of these packets and so on and so forth. Motrunner doesn't have such a nice abstraction. That means that we actually have to create our packets by, by scratch, basically, from scratch. So it means that we have to create packets according to the 8.2.15.4 standard and be actually uh, pay, pay a lot of attention of all the fields of, the, uh, of, of each packet, basically. So if you remember, you, you have probably seen this during lectures with Professor Cesana. This is the frame layout of an 8.2.15.4 um, packet. So we have the, the header, which is composed by these fields, okay? The frame control field, the frame control address, sequence number, destination uh, network, destination address, source network, source address, and then optional fields before I, the actual payload, which contains the data. <clears throat> and based on the frame control address value, you can use either short addresses or long addresses. This depends on uh, I mean, what you want to do in your application. 
So that means that in Mot Runner, each mot is identified by three addresses. Okay? We have a 16-bit personal area network identifiers, which identifies the network um, of the node. Then we have a 64-bit extended address, which is basically the physical address of each node, and it's, it's called the extended address. And then, optionally, we can use this 16-bit short address, which is basically derived from the extended address. And again, it's uh, an identifier of the node and can be used in those situations in which you want, for example, to save some bits in your messages. Okay? Of course, you can use the short address only if there are no ambiguities with other nodes' addresses, basically. <coughs> okay. So what happens is that whenever you receive a message, mot the Motrunner stack performs some sort of address filtering. Okay? So basing on the address of your moat and on the destination address which is contained in the message that you receive, the message will be accepted or not. Okay? So for example, if the frame control field indicates that the packet is a beacon and not a data packet, the packet will be accepted only if the source network matches the current uh, network or if the personal area network ID is broadcast, okay? So either if you are in the same network of who is transmitting the beacon or if the beacon is intended for all networks. If the frame control address field indicates that the presence of destination addresses, so in, in your um, header, then the current uh, PAN ID must match the destination PAN address, or the destination PAN address should be broadcast, <coughs> or the destination address must match the mode's address, or it could be broadcast. Okay. So depending on the combination of addresses that you have in your packet and the value of the frame control address field, your packet will be received or not. And this is actually very, very uh, tricky when you want your application to, to work. Okay? You, should, you, you cannot just create a packet and uh, hope that it will be received. You have to put the proper values in the field, okay, according to the 8.2.15.4 protocol. <clears throat> there are already some examples, of course, that we can start with, so you don't have to learn all the protocol. Um, these are the most frequently used methods of the radio class, so we can start uh, the reception mode and stop the reception mode in order to listen to the radio channel for incoming packets. We can use this function for transmitting a packet. And of course we have to pass the packet that we want to transmit to this function. And as we will see, a packet is nothing but a vector of bytes. We can set the handler for reception that is a function that we execute each time we, we receive a packet. So very, very similar to the receive event in TinyOS. We can uh, open and close the radio interface, set the channel of the radio interface, so the channel, radio channel on which we want to receive or transmit packets. And we may set the short address of our node if we want to use short addresses. Again, there's nothing better than actually looking at an example in order to understand how this works, okay? So we have the radio count examples in the Motrunner uh, folder, which is again very, very similar to the radio count to LEDs example in uh, TinyOS. So one node will transmit a number in broadcast or to another node, and upon reception of this uh, message, the receiving node will show on the LEDs the um, code of the counter which is inside the message. 
So let's look at the application. Oh, we can stop this. So radio count. Um, and let's open the radio count.java. <clears throat> okay. So there are a bunch of um, variables here. One of the most important is this one, xmit, which is a vector of bytes. Okay, and it will actually contain our packet that we want to transmit. Okay, so a packet is basically a sequence of bytes. This is another uh, important variable, and it's the radio variable, which is basically the object that you use in order to transmit and receive messages. So the first thing that we do is to create the radio object and to open it. This is the default way of opening the radio. If you are interested on uh, how this works, um, you can of course go oops, here on the Motrunner documentation, system API. and then there's radio here and here you have all documentation on how to use the radio in Motrana, okay? So there are all the these modes that you can call. Uh, for example, open what is um, I was trying to get here No, it's not here. Well, anyway. <clears throat> um, so something that you can do, for example, is to set what is the network address okay, that you want to use in order to check, uh, um, to, to include this address in, into the messages to be transmitted. And then you can prepare for example, a beacon frame with source addressing in this case. So you have to create a 7-byte uh, vector. The first byte will be the frame control field beacon, which is actually the code that 8.2.15.4 uses to inform that the frame is a beacon. The, the second byte will be a frame control address with source addressing. And then you can set the source pan ID and the source ID, which is actually the address of your node. Um, this is similar to what we have done for timers, so we can link the reception event with a function to be executed each time a message is received on the radio. And in this case, we will call the onRxPDU function which is defined here and what this function does it's basically it reads the message which is received and it set the states of the LEDs according to the value which is inside our our um, message basically <clears throat> and similarly we can uh, um, set a timer for transmission and link this timer to this function periodic send which will take care of transmitting packets. So if we look at the periodic send function, what it does, it increments a counter, it puts the, the value of the counter inside the message and then it calls the radio transmit methods for transmitting the message. So you can look at these examples in order to understand how to run uh, an example for radio communication. Um, we can test it, so we can close this, start 
mod runner shell create a mod it's here create another mod now you have two modes here you see I have created two modes and I will load on them this application which is the radio count minus java load radio count minus java minus 1.0 now if you don't specify the ID of the mode you want to load your assembly on the assembly will be loaded on all modes that you have in your simulation okay so you see I have these two modes which are basically running the radio count and both of them will basically exchange packets and uh, will display the value of their LEDs on their packets um, on the dashboard here there's also a link for the net view that you can uh, click <clears throat> and this basically gives access to the uh, physical network view in a way similar to Contiki so you have your two nodes basically which are <clears throat> well I didn't specify the position of these two nodes so they are basically overlapping in space but each time a packet is transmitted you see basically the content of the packet here together with some information on the node such as for example the RSSI received so the received signal strength of the node and other information so this could be used for a simulation let's see if I can um, move one node um, node information So now I have <clears throat> I have moved one node to position 10 0 and now these two nodes are basically separated. So this graphical interface is not as good as the one that we have in Kuja for Contiki. Uh, as I said Motrunner is in version beta so it's still under development. There are some bugs here, some issues, but still you can run <clears throat> some examples in it. Uh, we have just to look at the final thing which is how to log in so how to write messages during the simulation this is the same as uh, TinyOS DBG instruction for logging text on during the simulation and this can be done using the logger assembly which is basically an assembly that you put on the node together with your application and you use the functionalities provided by the assemblies in order to write something on the simulation so um, what we can do in order to do this there's a, a let's say an instruction list on how to do this the best way is to um, recompile the light application so we can stop this we can go on light uh, open the java file okay let me uncomment this instruction 
so we are importing the logger functionalities and this basically allows to uh, declare some text that we want to output on our simulation and then we can use these two functions append string and flash in order to uh, display our string during the simulation okay and again um, well this basically enqueue the string for being displayed and we have several channels similar to tinyOS for displaying messages so we have the info channel the debug channel the error channel and so on and so forth so you can decide which channel to use here and when you have to compile uh, this application since you need to also use the logger functionalities you need to use these keywords minus r logger minus 11.0 so um, should be like the um, assembly light um, for example 2.0 second version minus r logger minus 11 which is what we need in order to run the functionalities and then this is the source code <clears throat> okay then we can run the shell create a mode first we have to load the logger assembly and then we can load our new application which is the light minus 2.0 so we have all the LEDs which are now on and if we go here on mode uh, on console we see basically the outputs of our node so in this case uh, hello IoT world which is the message which we have written on our application uh, you also have here other messages which are coming from the virtual machine for so for example starting the garbage collector a virtual machine preempted virtual machine resume so you have all messages which are coming from all assemblies which are on your application that's why you, we don't see only our string but also other messages <clears throat> okay so I guess that's all for today so we have um, looked at mod runner functionalities seems to be similar to what provided by TinyOS um, there are some differences of course it's important to understand what these differences are and why are there uh, also remember that from a practical point of view mod runner is not really used and many many well I would say most application out there use either TinyOS or Contigi so it's good to understand how Motrana works because it gives you a different point of view on this world. But uh, since it's not very supported, um, when it actually comes to create something that works, it is not generally uh, used. Um, okay, that's it. If you have questions, otherwise, I'll see you next week.